All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so my name is Sheree. I'm an account manager here at Workamajig. And today's webinar, we are going to be uh, looking at the setup and tracking of custom fields, as well as custom fields on our spec sheets. So the reason you would use custom fields is to give you the ability to track and report out on project and client information that's going to be important to your business, okay? Um, especially when you're starting new jobs jobs and um, you're using our spec sheets, those spec sheets are just basically a way for you to gather all that information um, that you need to do that particular job and it prevents you having to go back and forth um, with the client. Um, not only are the custom fields great at uh, tracking project and client information, you can also use that to track employee information. So um, I'm going to be showing you some of the areas where you can use custom fields and how to get um, how to set up different types of custom fields like conditional fields, display when. Um, so that means, let's say you have a, a question with three options and somebody picks option B. Well, that option B would then prompt a new question. So that's when you hear conditional or display when, that's what that's what that's what that means. Um, we're going to be being able to show you drop down menus, multiple check boxes and display tabs. I definitely like display tabs because it's a way for you to be able to organize all of your custom fields and I'll be showing you that as well. Um, you can actually add custom fields throughout our entire system. So employee records, company records, contact records, projects, campaigns, retainers, conversations, opportunities, and the newest one that we've added was for our deliverables. Now, um, before I start some um, start to show you some examples, I do want to take you into the help guide. So here, if you type in custom fields into the search box, this is a good resource to use aside from this webinar that we're creating. So we have custom fields overview. Oops, goodness gracious. So this is one um, that you can come to, you can look at. I'm basically gonna be talking about them. So here you can see that our old one was um, listed here. We have opportunities, but I just mentioned that our newest one is going to be our deliverables. So again, if you guys need to come here, this is a great resource um, that you guys can come to aside from the webinar today, okay? All right, let's go in. I'm going to take you first into, oops, hold on, apologize. We're going to go into employee records first. So if you have your if you have access to your employees, then of course you'll be able to set these up and look at them. Okay. So one thing about custom fields for employee records is they only live on the employee record itself. You cannot create a views or report from them unless you go into um, the report center and create a custom report for these. And the, the idea is that it's confidential information. So again, um, you're going to have to use a special report to be able to pull these out. So you can see here, I've got my little tabs here, my skill set. So this is just regular multiple checkbox. I can set this up however way I want. My other tab is my HR tab. Here, this is where I can put in information that maybe we aren't tracking currently. So for example, like my termination date. Here, I can put in a date. Um, I also have last pay raise anniversary. Um, you might want to do rehire date. Um, so these are just going to be examples of me showing you what um, you can add to your system, as well as kind of get those wheels turning. Okay, so right now I'm going to take you into a custom report that I created just for my employees. So it's going to be under everyone, report center. And then I just put it in my favorites. Now I'm going to take you into this. I'm just going to hit search just to kind of give you an idea. So here, here's a list of my employees. You can see my skills that I added, my software skills, languages. Um, here's that last pay raise. So you can see those fields come into here, um, you know, using this, this particular data set. So if you click into modify here and I go to my settings tab, this is the employee data, data set right here. So this is where you guys can generate those reports for those employee custom fields, okay? Um, next, let's go ahead and take you to a company record. So let me just 
go here to my magnifying glass. I think I've got one in here. Let's see, Anthem Family and Friends. So on your company records, the custom fields are clear down here on the bottom underneath connections. You can see my custom fields here. If I click that open, again, these are just ideas to kind of get your mind going a little bit on what things you might want to track. So here I've got referral sources. I've got drop down menus that I can pick from. You guys can have as many as you want. Um, so again, mine's kind of short here with my uh, company record. But again, this is just giving you ideas of how you can set that up. OK, the next place that I do want to take you into is our uh, campaign. I do have a user lookup field that I created. So bear with me for just a second. So down here on the bottom, you have your custom fields on the main dashboard of the campaign. So here, I just have a regular um, text field, but this one here is actually that user lookup that I mentioned before. So you're going to see, we're going to go in the back end in a few minutes, and you're going to be able to see all these fields. So what this is doing is it's looking at every single paid user in my system. And now I can add that person as a custom field right into my campaign. So again, these are just different areas that you can set them up. Where are you going to see these custom fields? Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to go into our projects. And let's go to uh, this first one here. Let's try this one. So down here on the bottom, uh, somewhere down here, apologize, got a lot on there. So here I've created those tabs again. So in this case, I have this rush job. So this is actually a conditional or a display when field. So in this case, right now it says no, but if I click this and change it to yes, then the system is then going to prompt the next question. So again, it's going to ask me again, okay, well, if this is a rush job, did we apply the rush rates? So now I can come in here and I can say, well, yeah, nope, or maybe, yeah, we did add those rush rates to this particular client. And so again, I would save this and then that information would be here at the project level, okay? The other option here is I've created a section just for print jobs, so again, the idea here is if I say no here and uncheck this, all of my questions go away. But if this is something that's been shipped, I uncheck that. Um, I check yes. And then, of course, I have all of these other fields that populate. So uh, one thing I do want to mention about uh, conditional fields, um, you first of all, you can't make them a required field. OK, so that's just a little tip. You don't want to make them a required field. And ooh, excuse me. Um, the other thing that you well, let, let me backtrack a little bit. So there's going to be a difference between custom fields on your project as well as custom fields that are going to be on your spec sheets, which is where I'm going to show you next. Right. So the difference between them is usually the project custom fields are not design related. Um, they could be used for information that you want to pass on to your project managers or maybe your salesperson or maybe billing information that the billing person needs to know. So that's typically where you'd want to put your custom fields for the spec sheets. Those custom fields only live on the spec sheets themselves. OK, they you can't generate a report from them like you can with project custom fields. Um, you can use any type of views listing screen for project custom fields and be able to pull the report, see those fields. But with the spec sheet, you're not going to be able to do that. So and typically the specs are for um, designers or vendors. So we're going to go into into those areas next. OK, so um, yeah, we can go ahead and save those changes, I guess. All right, so I wanted to come up here at the top and we're gonna go into my spec sheets. So here, if I go into the spec sheet here, I have a few of listed here. So again, those printing specs, that would be something I would give a vendor or maybe a creative brief that my creatives or designers need to review. So again, these are just different options. These are already set up in your system if you haven't um, 
you know, messed with the defaults at all. These are just straight text boxes. You can see very simple things that you guys can um, set up. And then, of course, we have others in here. I'm going to go into my test spec sheet here. And what I wanted to bring to your attention is this instructions here. So this is what you call a display only. This doesn't require an action from somebody. It's just information that you're passing along. And in this case, it's going to be instructions about what's below here. So uh, this is, again, called a display only. And of course, you can use that as well. So I just want to show you all of these different areas that you guys can set these up. Um, and then we're going to go into the back end in a few minutes. Right. Um, the next thing I wanted to show you were some reports that I already had set up. So views and I have some project reports that I created. That are going to have those custom fields. So here you can see my cost center date shipped. How was it shipped? So again, that information that you put on those projects is going to show up on these listing screens. Now, there's one caveat to this with the projects listing screen they are combining both the project custom fields and your company custom fields so you need to be careful when you're pulling them out on your report so the difference that you um, the way you can tell them apart is you're going to see cf underscore in the name of the field this means it's a project custom field up at the top it's going to have company in between the the S, the CF, which stands for custom field, and then, of course, the um, underscore, and then, of course, the name of the field. Okay, so again, kind of just be careful. Um, you also want to pay attention to your naming convention, because again, if they're very similar, so, you know, there's a high probability that somebody's probably going to pick the wrong field when they pull it out on the report. Okay. Um, the other thing that you can do here, and you can actually do this with any of our listing screens, is you can actually highlight these boxes and then you can update custom fields and mass. So here, these are my two tabs. I can set this up. Maybe I grab four or five projects and I need to update this information and I don't want to go into each one of them. Now, you'll be able to do this with all of the other views except for the employees, because remember, that's only a custom, re custom view. Okay. Um, any questions so far before I move on? Okay. So the next thing that I wanted to show you was our project listing screen. This is actually one of my favorites. So let me come back here. So what I did is I created a, a column set. And what I mean by that is I created a separate column set just for my custom fields. So I clicked print only jobs. You guys can call it whatever you want. But what I love about this is I can go project by project, come in here and say, yep, it was, you know, it was shipped or no. I can go one by one, hit no, and I can put in or yes, and I can say the date shipped, the tracking number, the cost center, and I can simply go through this entire list without opening every single project. Okay, so for me, I love this one. Um, again, totally up to you. I just want to show you ideas on, in the system of where you can use these custom fields. Okay. Um, all right, so let's go make a few custom fields. Um, so let's go here to the back end, admin manager, system setup, and then down below on the bottom are your custom fields. So again, these are going to be the areas where you can add these custom fields. And of course, that newest one is down here at the bottom called deliverables field. All right. Now, I'm not going to show you how to add a custom field to each of these areas because once I show you how to do it once, it's going to be the same exact process, but just in a different area. So hopefully that makes sense to you. All right. So first thing that we want to do is we want to set up our security rights. So again, admin, system setup account information and we go into our security settings so here in the box i'm just going to type in cut oops custom field and you need to um, edit and assign custom fields as well as edit employee and contact custom fields so you just need those two security rights for somebody to be able to generate these custom fields for you okay uh, very easy very quick so let's go uh, create a custom field and actually let's go into the projects. 
Um, so I'm going to show you how to create a conditional field right out of the gate um, because it's going to show you three different fields all in one. So if you remember on my project, I have those tabs set up. So this is what one of those tabs looks like. So I can click and edit and you can see my field name, what the caption is, and I'm just using the display type of tab. Of tab. OK, so we're going to set one of those up. So I want to kind of keep with this theme. So I'm just going to click this plus sign and we're going to do um, events and then we'll just do, uh, let's see, so events. So let's do, uh, let's do events only, sorry. And then Oh, for the field name, actually, with the field name, you can just keep it short and sweet. And then for the type, we don't want a text box. We want to scroll down and use that tab. OK, and then I'm going to save. So once you create that um, custom field, it's going to show up here to the right. So of course, depending on where you want to put it, I'm just going to grab it and put it down on the bottom now. Um, this tends to be a little finicky. So sometimes when you drop it, it doesn't always go to the bottom. It might go to the top, just like it did. So here, this is where you guys can just drop it, bring it all the way down. Let's see, did it drop? Did I not? Oh no, let's, oh, goodness gracious. Oh my gosh, I apologize. Well, we'll keep it at the top. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> Again, the idea is to just kind of drag it all the way down to the bottom and release it, but obviously I'm, it's having technical issues, issues right now. So let's, um, we're just gonna create this new tab. Now let's go ahead and create the, the question. So let's come in here and we're gonna say venue and then So we're going to ask our question. Now, this one, I'm going to pick um, the radio button. OK, so now you can add descriptions and hints if you'd like, if it doesn't seem self-explanatory. But in this case, I'm just going to leave it because it's really going to be a yes or no question. So this is where you're going to enter in your options. You're going to do a hard return. And then I'm just going to do yes or no. So very easy, very quickly, you know, you can add these. Here's all of your options down here. I've showed you quite a few of these um, already, what they look like from the front end. But um, so now here, we're just going to save. And then now I'm going to drag it up underneath events. OK, so again, create the, the custom field, drag it over to the left hand side so that it will display. And now we want to create our display, uh, display when which is going to be that conditional field, right? So we'll just say um, venue name and then okay, so there's my caption. And then here I'm just going to leave it as a text box, okay, because I want them to have enough inf enough room to be able to put that information in. Um, so again, you guys could create multiples of these if you wanted to, but then this is the key. This is where you're going to hit display when, and it's asking me, well, when do we need to display this field? So that means we need to link it to the first one that we created, which was called venue. Then it's asking, okay, well, what is going to trigger this question to populate? or to pop up. So here I'm just going to use the word contains and I'm going to say yes. So what I'm saying is whoever hits the word yes, this question is going to pop up right after it. So again, I'm going to save and then I'm going to drag it right underneath that. So when you're looking at this from the back end, it you're going to see all the questions. It's not going to be hidden. Um, of course, because we're trying to set everything up so that people can use it from the front end. All right. Um, all right. And oh, 
I forgot to mention one last thing. For the conditional or display wind fields, um, they can only be one level deep. So what I mean by that is you have a question here that's yes or no, and then your next question that pops up is another yes or no, or maybe one, two, three, and you know they need to pick up, you know, question number two. So you can't continue that um, levels. It's only one level, but you can add. You can have three questions pop up that are linked to this one here. So I would just have to continue to make that same one and pick yes, then all three questions would, would uh, pop up for you, okay? Um, all right, so let's, we set those up. Let's go take a look at our project. Oh, hold on, there seems to be a question. Insecurity, apologize, insecurity, in effect for all custom fields or none, wait. For example, can I assign security rights to specific tabs or custom fields? No, um, no. So it's, um, they're available. So if you create the custom field and all of them are on the project, then all of them will be able to be seen. So there aren't security rights around each specific custom field. Great question, by the way. Um, okay, so project, we wanna go to our project. So uh, recent, and we'll go here. I may have to refresh, but hopefully, oh no, it's here, great. So here you can see that I have my events only tab. Now I've added the new one and then I can say, yep, this venue, it's, it's going to be booked. And then here's that conditional field, the name and address are going to pop up, okay? So again, these are just examples of how you guys can create that. I showed you how to create three different fields right out of the gate and this is how it's gonna show up. OK, um, the other thing I wanted to show you is we do have custom fields. Uh, yeah, we can see. Yes, uh, we do have custom fields on our project request forms. So here we have defined project requests. So if you guys are using these, I'm sure you guys have already found the custom fields, but I'm just going to go into my direct mail form here. And the custom fields are underneath this request, so they're kind of hidden, but here. I have my fields. So when you come in here for the first time, you're not going to have any available fields. You're literally going to be creating all of them from scratch. OK, um, this budget amount is one that I wanted to show you because we have an ability to map it. So what I mean by that is if there is a field on my project request form that matches a, a custom field that's on my project, then that information is going to populate my project and down here you can see this map too so i'm saying i created the same exact field on my project request form and i'm mapping it to the same one that's on my project custom field now the only thing about these mapping the type of field and the order of your questions must be exact so what i mean by that is if in, in this case, this custom field is a, a new, numeric, right? And I have, you know, my questions here, everything, everything has to be exact. So I have my budget amount on my project request form. And if I go back to my custom fields on my projects, and where is my, oh, here, budget amount right here. So this field, if I click into this one, this is the same exact field. It has to be the same. And unfortunately, you can't copy them from one section to the other. You literally have to create them from scratch. OK, so again, make sure that the type, meaning this, and the whatever options you have are identical. So for example, you have flyer, billboard, website. Well, then the other field must say flyer, billboard, website. Does that make sense? Hopefully that does. OK. Um, the last thing that I kind of wanted to show you was we do have custom fields on our uh, uh, change request forms. So kind of the same idea. You have that form that you've created, so I can click into that. Now, these custom fields are over here on the left, so sometimes they're on different, different sides of it. Um, but this is where I can create that custom field right out of the gate. Okay, so this populates for you for you to add your first field. Um, 
the only thing I don't think I showed you was our separator text. Where is this separator text? So I'm going to go into the spec sheet right now to kind of give you an idea of what those are going to look like. OK. So here's my spec sheet and uh, let's see, do I let's go into my photography. I might have one in here. OK, no printing. Here we go. So this is what we call a separator text. So all it is doing is creating that separation of data that you're entering in on, in this case, on a spec sheet. So if I click into edit, this is where you see the separator text. OK, so again, um, you know, kind of think about how you want to use these, play around with them. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, one last thing. So, for example, we have all of this printing information. If you guys don't like to scroll, then what you can do is when you go to create your field, you could do like PRT and then do um, a colon and then label all of your custom fields with that prefix with that prefix. OK, and then what will happen is instead of uh, scrolling through all of this entire list, you could just type in those words. Right. So I'm just going to use a different word. See if it's in here. Well. So if I typed in PRT, then that list would then, you know, shrink and only show me those fields. OK, so that's just a little tip or trick that you can um, you can use to kind of keep those fields together if you want to. Um, the fields do go in alphabetical order. So if you think you lost it, just kind of go down the list and I'm sure it's going to be there. OK, so are there any other questions? Um, Aside from the one we had earlier. Hopefully I didn't go too fast. All right, so I just want to thank everyone for joining our webinar today and the court the recording will be available in probably I would say two to three days, so if you want to check our support site then. Um, you know, just go there. And if it's not there, you're more than welcome to send in an email to support at workamajig.com. Um, and then we'll find that uh, we'll find that link for you. OK. Oh, looks like we do have a couple of questions. Oh, OK. All good. Thank you. That's good. Um, can you provide samples of cases of use cases for custom fields? Um, that's where I was showing you all those different areas. So. Um, Again, you can add them to employee fields. So it's really, it's really what information is important to you and to your business, right? Um, so example, like I said, I've, I've showed these before. You're gonna come in here, go to the custom fields. Again, it's just literally, it's information that's important to your company. And that's, that's it. And you guys can put them anywhere you want. So um, the list, like I mentioned before, is all here under that ad, admin manager system setup and custom fields. So this is where you can enter all those custom fields in if you need to. OK. Um, let's see. Oh, looks like we're getting more questions here. Hold on. <laughs> let's see. So when you say fields must match when you create them, is it because if you change one, it changes them for all throughout the system? No, so the mapping, it, the reason it has to be identical is so that the system can know that whatever is filled out in that one field needs to be put into the field on the, that same field on the project. Hopefully that makes sense. So everything has to be identical, okay? Because the system then won't, if, if something is wrong, you might put it on your project request form, but then it won't show up on your project. OK, so hopefully that makes sense. Is there any math capability example? Uh, no, 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 no math calculations or anything here. It's just pretty much what's listed in our, our list of options. Um, other than that, uh, let's see. Just looking for other ideas of how to use them. Um, let's see. I mean, you could probably use them on opportunities. Um, again, it's information that you're trying to gather for, you know, new prospects. 
it's really looking at these areas and just, again, like I said, it's whatever's important that you need to capture that's important for your business. Okay. All right. So uh, thank you for joining and we will talk to you soon. Take care.